What's up guys, Corey has no life here and welcome to episode number 13 of the F1 2019 Noob Career Mode. Um, we are here for race number 12 of the Formula 1 season from the Hungarian Grand Prix. Now we just have a look here, we've got one of our major chassis upgrades but the uh, aero and the other chassis upgrade that we were looking for uh, both failed which really sucks because um, the major update for F1 2019 is looming which means that um, our car performance is probably going to take a massive nosedive being as though you know, we are the worst car on the grid in real life so uh, yeah so we're going to reinstate the chassis upgrade there uh, we have to wait till after practice before we can reinstate the aero upgrade and it's going to be a somewhat wet qualifying here, so it's going to be interesting as we're going to go jump straight into qualifying. Good afternoon, race fans, and here we are again for qualifying at the Hungaro Ring. Who will have tuned the perfect setup for their car? We'll find out soon. I was looking at some highlights of previous races here and the one thing that really stood out to me was the run down to turn one. It's not an easy one to navigate as everyone is scrapping to get into there first. Turn one's always a consideration for this race. It's certainly a difficult one to get right when surrounded by other cars, but the race isn't won or lost there. You've got to be smart, get through and hope your rivals get into trouble and not you. So here we go for Q1. to the end of qualifying here and we've dropped down to 12th. George Russell was a little bit up there. We've got the Q2 now and it is intermediate conditions. And we are out on the green roll tyres. There's still a slight little bit of a dry line there. We have a massive handful of oversteer coming up at the first corner. of the second corner, quite massively. That would be usually the flat out turn through there. We didn't do any running in the wet in practice, so uh, that made things a lot more difficult here. Charles Leclerc, 
Hull at first, gone for a 148 there. Hull from our teammate. Come around the penultimate corner. Looks like we're catching up to Hamilton here. We got the pole for it. We scroll down. We see Pierre Gasly, our rival, down in eighth. George Russell, our teammate, only managing 13th. And Lucas Weber bombing out in 15th position. We've got a few free now to start our lap. So far. Qualifying finished. It's time to remind ourselves of our top three. We'll Williams, a Hamilton, here, and, and we'll Charles Leclerc. Goodbye for now then, but we're really P7. just getting started. Make sure to join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. And now it's time for us to prepare for the race. See the uh, rivalry update and we'll get the resource point update as well. And uh, next time I talk, we'll be sitting on the grid for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Well done. 
That was a good qualifying performance. It's always wonderful to come back to the lively Hungaro ring. A popular destination this, nice and close to the beautiful city of Budapest with some exciting racing to boot. Who can forget Michael Schumacher pushing his old teammate Rubens Barrichello up towards the pit wall in 2010 or those great races of 2014 and 2015 as well. With me to enjoy it all is Anthony Davidson, a man who made his Grand Prix debut here with Minardi back in 2002. So, Anz, this is a bit of a special one for you, I'd imagine. Yeah, I'd say so. I also stood in to commentate on Jensen's win in 2006, and as I was a test driver for Honda at the time, you can imagine that was quite an emotional Grand Prix. It's also a tough circuit on the drivers, this one, too. Lots of long, slow corners that require a lot of patience from inside the car. Plus, it's a very downforce-heavy circuit. I mean, it's all relative, of course, but if you're lacking a bit in downforce, or if you've got a bit of an imbalance in the setup, this is definitely one of the worst places to have to deal with that. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. It's Williams in pole position then, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Leclerc, Vettel, Valtteri Bottas, and Verstappen, Gasly, Perez, Ricardo, and Kevin Magnussen, Raikkonen, Hülkenberg, George Russell, and Grosjean, Weber, Sainz, Alexander Albon, and Lando Norris, Butler, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. And now it's time to head down to the track. Alrighty, so you can see that right, still let's on the be pole. patient going into turn one. We want to be in a good position for the rest of the race. Good luck. Now, uh, we had a choice here of uh, doing the same thing we've been doing this entire time so far, which is the mediums to the softs. But I thought this time, let's mix it up a little bit. We'll pack on the soft tires for this first stint and see if we can fight it out. Those guys are going to the race. We'll see the cars warming up on the grid after the siding lap. Go five red lights. And we are off and racing. Right, I'm not pushing this thing because we've skipped all the half. I think about six, this is Aaron, right? 
Please, please. Yeah, I don't know. If someone really please explain it to me, I have no clue. That was our last stop. stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Now we move on to the end of lap seven. Let's see, we're right in the thick of the midfield now. George is coming in for his stop. We've got the battle right behind us. We're right behind Norris. We've got the TRS and Slipstream on him. We're spinning this and we get the work done really easily. We saw uh, George Russell coming out of the pit cell on the right. And we get a second bite of the cherry. Now it's time okay, to face the Carlos Sainz. Yellow flag's out. I think that's behind us. Virtual safety car, virtual, virtual safety, safety car. car, reduce speed immediately and keep a positive delta. Lewis Hamilton is out of the race. He's gone very slow there. And oh, he got punted by the Ferrari. I'm not sure whether that was Leclerc or Sebastian Vettel that's hit him. But there is going to be a very limited Ferrari out there. Dot in the pits, which I'm pretty sure was the first, so that means the metal is in the clear. This section is just so hard to pass, but we're going to make it work. We'll go up to the inside of the Gap to car in front is 3.0 seconds. We've pretty much burned up our excess fuel. We'll be back on target soon. Don't wait to turn the engine down. We get around very quickly there. We don't want to get caught up behind. This is your final lap. Final lap of the race. Now we are on the final lap. Bottas still right there behind me. So is the Saturn. There's only one lap of fuel remaining. If you're wondering what's happened to uh, Sebastian Vettel. He had some kind of mechanical drama and was going slow. We advise moving to mix two. Fuel to mix two. Now we are on rich fuel mixture here. We're trying to burn up as much of the fuel as we can. strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection, a shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. It looks like it's time once again to hand out the silverware as these successful drivers make their way to the podium. It was a gritty performance today by Williams and they've got the race win to prove it. Us, Bottas and Verstappen. 
So, let's review the driver's standings. Well, the gap at the top of the championship has been cut down after a difficult race today for our championship leader. So, Anthony Davidson, to which you rank as your driver of the day? Well, often my go-to would be a driver who's managed Gasly to pull off an impressive feat during the race. However, in this instance, I was more impressed by Nico Hülkenberg's clean driving throughout the event. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. It was also a strong Grand Prix from Haas F1 this weekend. Fantastic work from the American team to move themselves further up the table. Well, that was certainly an incredible weekend of racing. Be sure to join myself and Ant for more exciting Exciting Formula One action you soon. We're still sitting in third in the uh, championship there, the driver standings. We go and have a look at the constructors as well, and I'm pretty sure everything is status quo except for Haas and Racing Point, who have been battling it out pretty hard most of this season. Good day today. Let's have your take on it. Some excellent overtaking moves from your former teammate today. Did he learn some of them from you? Judging from today's race, it must be pretty hard to fend off Devon when he wants to pass. How are you feeling after that win? You really looked in control of your car out there. Your team must be thrilled. Great. Well, that's everything. You see the rivalry update there. We gained five points on both George and Pierre Gasly. So uh, next race, we're probably going to actually get the rivalry up on Gasly. We've got 1,500 resource points that we can play with after getting the uh, team bonus there. We have reputation with every single team. Fantastic it's podium. Time well for done. Contract negotiation. Keep pushing like this for the rest of the season. Now, knowing that the uh, update was looming, it was a hard choice of whether I was going to do the Williams contract negotiation or whether I was going to negotiate with another team. But it looks like for the moment I'm going to just stick with Williams. We'll see how the performance is after the big patch update. And then we're going to move on from there. But again, we're going for level 3 everything. We're going for the best results we can possibly ask for. Which is the exact same All contract right, we had last time. the term's been agreed. All that's left and is to sign the paperwork. You'll be on this new deal from the next race weekend. Move on to the R&D tree. You see, we uh, asked for the upgrade on the uh, arrow back as well. But uh, this is the point where I'm going to start trying to save up a little bit of resource points because uh, we're starting to get towards the part of the season where you know Formula One is going to start throwing us a curveball with you know an R&D reset. So we want to make sure that we're in a good position for that uh, resource point-wise. Uh, we're still going to go for this minor chassis upgrade here. And I think we're going to go for the two engine upgrades as well. No, we're not. Alright guys, so this is going to end the episode. Uh, thank you guys for coming out and uh, showing your support. Again, we're going to leave you with the highlights of the race as provided by Formula One. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.